is Axel Barr and today we're talking to a couple of mine safety specialists. Ian Cooper, thank you for coming here for this uh, interview. Welcome. You are manager for health and safety of Hut Bay Minerals in northern Manitoba and Canada. You have over 40 years experience in the mining industry and 37 years of these in uh, Hut Bay. They mine copper and zinc with three operating mines in Manitoba and one project currently in Peru. You have many years experience in mines rescue. Tell me about how you got involved in mines rescue and what makes it so special. Well, when I first started in the mines in England uh, as a young, young lad, I was really involved in the first aid teams. And when I came to Canada, um, the guys in Canada heard that I'd been involved in the first aid teams in England and they asked me to be part of the, the mine rescue. And I thought that was a great honor to be asked to be part of the mine rescue. So I started off as their kind of uh, expert first aid person on the teams and eventually I uh, really became part of the team and got to be vice captain, captain of teams and uh, be part of that mine rescue family. So it's been great. And looking into the future now, as it becomes more and more challenging to access the world's resources and the mines are getting deeper and deeper, then what impact does that have on mine rescue? Well, definitely the mines getting deeper will have an impact on mine rescue. You know, the, the mines, when they're deeper, they're hotter. So it's going to be an impact on our mine rescuers actually in a rescue mission. Uh, there's actually uh, issues with ground and the st stability of the ground at that uh, level. Uh, so we've got a, you know, that's another impacting factor with the mines being deeper. And also distance, the distance that our teams have to travel to actually uh, rescue individuals. And by saying that, do you see any limits uh, that could come up? Yeah, time. Time is a big one. Um, and heat. Uh, those are the two limits that I see that could affect our mine, mine rescue teams going forward. Just the heat from the point of view of uh, fatigue and the heat of in a rescue mission and the time for the, the distance. So it's, it's actually going to play a factor. Now today we heard a lot of, uh, in, had a lot of information about refuge rooms and uh, shelters. Um, they are supposed to give miners a safe haven in case of emergency. What are your experiences with refuge rooms and movable shelters and what is their part in your rescue concept? Yeah, We have both. We have the permanent uh, refuge stations and we also have the portable refuge stations. Uh, the way that we use our portables, um, if we have a mine that's been developed and is continually moving with small crews, the portable refuge stations are a great tool to follow that crew through the development stage. If we have a small mine with smaller crews, they're also a good thing for a permanent refuge station as well, because it's small crews that are in those uh, portable refuge stations. Um, that's what we basically use them for now. In the bigger mines, we use the permanent uh, refuge stations, the permanently built into the rock. And talking about risks, fires underground are the biggest threat uh, for miners and the mine. Uh, who should first respond? What should they be uh, wearing and what kind of equipment and what kind of training is necessary? Yeah. You know, the first responder is going to be the operator. So we have to train the operator of how to react or respond when a fire happens. So most equipment underground now is uh, equipped with fire suppression systems. So they, they're taught to activate that fire suppression system. If that doesn't work, then they use a fire extinguisher to extinguish the fire or try and put the fire out. So what we do is we train our operators to be the first responders. What we don't want is those operators to be heroes and try and fight a fire that's too big. What they're trained to do is to go to a refuse chamber if the fire gets out of control and they can't extinguish a fire and form for the mine rescue teams to come and do their job. Today we have had the first day of the International Mines Rescue Conference here in Niagara Falls. Uh, what is your impression after day one and what do you uh, take home with you to your organization? Well, there's definitely been some very good speakers here. And it's always good to listen to speakers from other countries or even within our own country here in Canada and learn from what they've uh, experienced over the last two years, a year, uh, from the last conference. Uh, there's, uh, you know, the one from South Africa with the, uh, the cameras in the shafts. Um, there was an accident, I believe, uh, that they, they talked about at the last conference in China, and they were going to uh, invent or put together some cameras to, to use. They've done that, and they're successful in that. So that's the type of technology that we could take back to our minds 
and use in, in our mines as well. Um, the use of helicopters to move mine rescue teams around from mine to mine to save time. Another thing that came up today, just from a logistical point of view, which I think is a good thing for us to look at as well, uh, being in northern Manitoba, because it's, you know, time differences uh, between mines, two hours between mines. So we, we learn from each other. We, like I say, we're a big, you know, family in the mine rescue uh, world, and we definitely can learn. There's been some fantastic uh, papers given here. Okay, let's see what comes tomorrow, and thanks for your time. Thank okay. you. It's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.